Honest. Responsible. Strong. Loyal. Provider. Passionate. The problem with masculinity today is how it's portrayed in the media. This begins with families, friends, teachers, community leaders, all playing a role in helping boys define what it means to be a man. Mainstream media representations also play a role in reinforcing the ideas about what it means to be a real man in our society. In most media portrayals, male characters are rewarded for self-control and control of others, aggression, violence, financial independence, and physical desirability. Um, I think that a real man is independent, responsible, and tough. Real man is hardworking. He's strong and smart. A real man is passionate, tough, and honest. A real man is wise, motivated, and loyal. To me, there's no definition of real man. Um, I feel like each man is unique in their own way, and they live their own life separately from each other individual in the world. And if a man doesn't show these aspects, I've, I will call him gay. If a male doesn't meet the real man characteristics, they're considered soft. If a man doesn't meet a uh, real characteristic, it is considered soft. They are considered a low life, a scumbag, or a bum. Um, I consider them a human being, just like me, you, and anybody else. Uh, and the other way, I think that the society takes our behavior. My judgment on a real man comes from mostly the media and just like growing up, like what the social norm was. A real man is the one who takes care of his family and educates his children. My main influence that has a judgment on what a real man is is my dad because he's everything a real man should be. Uh, my family, uh, mostly my dad, he raised me to not judge people and just live your life how you want to, like, live it. Um, he taught me, like, you don't need to, like, fill any shoes, you just need to be you and be yourself, so that's why I feel like there's no definition of a real man. The, the media influence in our behavior because everyone wants to be, like, the guy or the girl who appears on TV on the movie. Yeah, I think the media has the influence on what a real man is because it like gives them like something that they have to like strive to be I guess I don't know and the media in the media there is this stereotype of the perfect man with an athletic body and a cute face no because the media always over exaggerates things and I feel like a real man isn't going to be someone on TV acting and pretending to be someone they're not um, yes and no, but that's to a certain degree. So let's say if I see like David Beckham on a commercial with cologne, I mean, looks good or whatever, like dress nice, I don't think that's a real man. I just think that's what they're trying to promote. So I don't think you can really um, promote what being a, like a real man is through uh, social media and things like that. Since I said everyone's different, um, there's going to be different ways of perceiving that information. As you can see, the majority of students' views on masculinity have been completely skewed by the influence of the media and a stereotypical definition of a real man. Today in social media, a popular app called Yik Yak, shown in this picture, shows that people's opinion on what a real man is, is that of the stereotype that men must be tough and if they show emotion, they are soft. Today, unhealthy body images are common among young teens who are brought up in a society that puts importance on beauty. From the very beginning, we see images of beauty that can change and shape who we become. Disney is one of the first experiences we have with these ideas of beauty. We learn from these films that we should aspire to look a certain way or that we should act a certain way. Boys are shown how men should act and what they should look like if they want to be a real man. Girls are told that they should aspire to be a princess with long hair, a small waist, a large bust, and that a man will always rescue them. These images have transferred to adult media as well. We see ads with wafer-thin models and macho men who resemble the characters of Disney films. These people are real, living people. We tend to forget the important fact, though, that their photographs are enhanced and airbrushed. These images also have a large impact on us, even though we may not realize it. Yes, Safe Path Survival Resources of Family Resources offers free and confidential services for survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault. Yes, 
and this goes back to the training that I spoke of. So we have this advocacy training um, on the Illinois side, it's 64 hours, and on the Iowa side, it's 30. And um, that's required in order to become um, a certified advocate. And so um, advocates respond in, in crisis. And um, so this training is extremely important. Um, the volunteers go through it, staff go through it. Um, community members that provide any sort of support or education have to go through it. And so um, that's really central to my role at Safe Pass, so that's why I keep plugging it. Um, but uh, it, it's extremely important throughout this training that we're hitting on, um, on these issues throughout. So, um, you know, gender stereotypes and um, changing the norm. Uh, we, we start with feminism, we, we go through sexual assault dynamics, um, domestic violence dynamics, we talk about power and control, um, which is fundamentally um, why these, these issues exist. Um, and then we, you know, we talk about, um, we end with prevention, because prevention is hopeful. And, um, you know, you're learning all this stuff that's really sort of... Yeah, we have seen such such change just in having that conversation. We've had college students who have taken the class have gone back to their schools, created you know sexual assault awareness groups. They've, they've started meeting with faculty to have conversations about how they can make campuses safer. Uh, our community members who are connected to the Davenport school system uh, have invited us in to do specific trainings on specific areas. And uh, absolutely, I mean, there's definitely a buzz about this around town. And that's, that's really exciting because we can't do it alone. Mm -hmm. And it takes everybody, uh, no matter who you talk to, uh, that you that you are a bystander in, in, and you sort of get out there and promote this stuff. Because, you know, women have been having this conversation for a long time and um, we're ready for our partners, our male partners, to get up there and have that with us. Absolutely, and if you think about the battered women's movement, it was a grassroots movement. And so it started in people's basements and, um, you know, word of mouth and I know this person and it spread over to this town and then everything started small, you know, and you can't have these kinds of conversations on a macro level. It has to be, um, you know, these two people agree and they start something up and then they bring in community members and then they champion that effort with, with this particular organization and yeah, it has to grow. Uh, slowly, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, I'm not sure we're ready for some big change, some big solutions to a, to a problem like that. Mm -hmm. Some solutions, such as the Promise Keepers, which were a group of people that held catalytic events for men, challenging them to embrace their calling to lead their families, churches, and communities in worship of and obedience to Jesus the Messiah. Although the Promise Keepers did not work and they had a rise, and fall. The rise and fall of the Promise Keepers provided insight into American culture, showing that Americans suffer from what might be best described as a collective form of attention deficit disorder. Our society changes with such rapidity that it is a real challenge for any group to command sustained attention in the public eye. Social life in 21st century America seems to be more liquid than solid. A micro solution to this issue is to have small groups like families, churches, and friends getting educated on these stereotypes in the media of what a real man is and begin to show people the truth of being a real man that's not the stereotypical one the media enforces. A macro solution to this issue is to begin showing more real men in ads and on TV that aren't the stereotypical type that the media enforces on us. It could help people to form a new definition of what a real man is that's not the stereotype we have all been taught.